Hi, welcome back. This, this is another office hour video. Uh, if you don't know what this is, we're doing questions with Ruben Radding. We've done two or three of these already? This is the third one? This is the third one. This is the third one. So go watch the previous two after you're done with this one. This one we're switching up a little bit. Um, we're still taking questions from the audience. Uh, however, there are some topics that I think uh, we'd like to discuss as well. Uh, Ruben, how are you doing? I'm okay. Yeah, yeah, things are good. Enjoying the summer? Uh, yeah, it's a little hot for me, but I'm I'm dealing. I'm still working and you know, getting getting it done. Yeah. yeah. What's what's been on your mind lately? What do you what, what are you kind of going through? Well, through? I'm uh, in a bit of a uh, inner struggle because I'm I'm actually working on a book for probably next spring, mm. and um, it's uh, it's revealing some interesting things to me. The process of doing this, which I knew to expect, but the things that are coming out of it are really interesting. And the reason I'm happy to bring it up here is because um, the last time that we did this, uh, I spent a bunch of time talking about composition, and I thought it'd be interesting this time to talk a little bit more about content. It ties in with what I'm saying about working on a book, because what happened was um, recently I got together with my friend Matt Stewart, and he helped me work on a start of an edit for the book went through work from the last 10 years of my photography. And um, we tried to be really like quick and brutal and just, you know, separate out the stuff that's clearly the best and, you know, deal with a few minor issues about that. And I got a good ways into forming a sequence when suddenly I saw that I, the, the edit that we had begun with uh, had this really noticeable emphasis accidentally on photos that feature children. And there's nothing wrong with that. I don't have any ethical problem with that. I don't have any you know, problem if that's somebody's work. You know, It's fine. But I walked around these last 10 years with a certain idea that can't necessarily even be put into words about what my work is and about the tone of it and what it stresses, what it de-emphasizes, de et cetera. And the last thing in my mind is lots of kid pictures, right? Now that's only the surface. It, like even a lot of those kid pictures, it's not like it's really about kids, but the kids are featured in making whatever the point is in the picture. Many of these pictures are really important to me, so I'm not gonna necessarily just start taking them all out, but I need to change the edit and the sequence in a way to bring the emphasis back to the things I think are actually important about what I'm doing and, and that makes it feel like mine. Right. One of the things that I feel really clear about like looking at a picture like this, which is kind of important to me and might be the first one in the book, is it's not about these people. Like the aboutness of this is really unimportant. It's about the, the physicality of the way these people are connected, the in-betweenness of the moment. The grip is really tight on, on the kid's wrist, but he's not being pulled forward yet. You see all of her momentum. So it's this tense in-between moment. That's really important to me. And it's not about who these people are or what the topic of this may or may not be, yeah. right? So this to me feels really charged and has a lot of questions in it um, and leaves a lot of room in the ambiguity of it for your interpretation, which to me makes the viewer's experience much more nuanced and personal. It's like when you read a book, uh, if the author is going to, I mean, I'm stealing this from Tom Roma, but if, if the author wants to describe a blue sky, they don't change the blue ink, right? It's like he trusts that your imagination is going to be more interesting than spelling it all out. So like another piece of subject matter um, here, it's, if it's just that this woman has, you know, gotten down to the ground or has fallen or something, that's one thing. But aiding it with the way everything in the picture seems to form around her, even the, the edge of this crosswalk and the people walking by, and then these stripes meeting all these other stripes and even the stripes of the flag up here, which got a little cropped, but you know what I'm saying? Like putting all of those things together, for me anyway, makes this picture rise above just like, oh look, she fell, Yeah. right? So we all have our own pictures that are merely just like, okay, well the guy tripped or the guy's tying his shoe or you know whatever the little non-moment moment is. And you look at it and 
So often in crits I've been in, the, the question will be like, what could I have done to make this great yeah. rather than just mediocre? And often there might not be anything, right. right? It's a very sort of aspirational question in critique. It's like this assumption that I, the photographer, could do something so masterful with anything that I could make it into a great picture. And some things just aren't that photographic. Right, and that's something that's been a big revelation for me as well, is like there's a lot of subject matter, a lot of moments, a lot of things that I now kind of just walk right past and don't even try to take a picture of, because I've done it 2,000 times and seen how unphotographic it is. And another thing about subject matter is context, right? There are some, some photos I have in this pile that I'm considering for this book where, you know, if I gave you the total context of, you know, how this came to be, it would completely ruin what we like about this picture. Yeah. And so I spend a lot of time looking at stuff in the world and thinking about its potential outside of its regular context, outside of us understanding what came before and after and made this, you know, moment what it is. Because I have a lot of different things. Some things are just, you know, product of street wandering. And then other things come from sort of, you know, events. Like this one, which I don't mind explaining slightly, is from a big water balloon fight in Central Park. You know, I don't need you to not know that in this case. But I still think it's better without someone telling you. Right? Yeah. So, again, it's not composition. It's not strictly the content, but certainly an issue in making this kind of picture is how much are you spelling out and how much are you leaving to people's sense of wonder. And I think the sense of wonder is really underappreciated and underutilized, you know, by a lot of our peers that yeah. we see. Yeah. Because another thing that came out of it, there was a whole bunch of pictures that Matt and I rejected when we were going through hundreds of photos um, because of a certain visual character they had which felt apart from these ones that we kept. And he made this great point. He was like, well, that's another book potentially that you're you know, working towards. And it felt like such a revelation because um, that's not what I expected going into trying to make an edit. You, don't, you, you think, I'm gonna try and find this thing that I'm making. I'm gonna make this thing. You don't think, I'm gonna find the clues in making this thing towards a whole other thing I'm gonna do down the road, might be years from now, but now I kind of have a vision of what it is. Yeah. And so that's really exciting. Yeah. It's almost more exciting than feeling like, oh, I'm gonna nail this thing now. Right, yeah. You know? So in the end, the process is great. The process is everything, and um, I'm, I'm completely trusting in it, but it throws you curves. Yeah throws you curves. Do you feel like this process is something that people should do or that you should do regardless if you're making a book or not because of the things that it reveals? Like editing is something I'm always doing. Like, uh, you know, every, every card that I download to the computer, I, you know, go through quickly and kind of make a mark on every picture that I think I might want to see again, which is not that many. You know, there's that level of editing, then there's the level of editing that goes on when you're thinking about maybe posting something. There's the level of editing that goes on when I'm making a zine that's 36 pages, you know? So I have this level of editing, and that's usually over like a, a very strict segment in time yep. of work. So like this one is from last October to this July. And so then this, the editing process for that is a certain thing. And yeah, it reveals other stuff as well, just like this book concerned. But the book thing is so much bigger by necessity yeah. that it reveals different levels of stuff. You know, I mean, this is like 36 pages. I usually start with something like 150 that I'm trying to like chop it down to 36. And with a book, you know, there is no set number, right? I mean, yeah. you can walk into it with an arbitrary decision of like, oh, a book should be 50 pictures or it should be 72 pictures or whatever you choose. And my hope is whatever length of, or whatever number of pictures uh, this book ends up being, the material itself will dictate how many pictures there should be. So if it feels like it's too much, it's too much. If it feels like it's not enough, it's not enough. It doesn't matter what the number is. Is there a place or a timeline of when people can expect a pre-order or a link, or should they just follow you and be along for the journey? 
Uh, follow, I probably won't be giving too many updates about this for a little while, um, but you know, probably later this year I'll make a little bit of noise about what to expect. But there'll be some sort of pre-ordering going on or crowdfund, I'm not sure yet. Okay. It's I'm at a very early stage with the whole thing. Cool, all right, all right go. Yeah, looking at next spring. Go follow Ruben, pay attention, book come in sometime next year. Sometime next year. Cool, all right, let's, let's go change, change locations. Okay. So recently, I've been taking a lot of photos and I think I've been holding on to a lot of photos and not sharing them. And, and with talking to a lot of people, it seems like they're going through the same thing with like, they don't really know when to share versus when to hold on to certain photos. Mm -hmm. So how do you think about the thought process of the urge to share photos versus the value of holding on to them for some kind of later use? I've, I'm no stranger to the dilemma of the urge to post versus the urge to hold things back. Uh -huh. If you're in a dilemma about it, both things offer a, a different kind of fear, right? There's the, the fear of not being part of things, not being contributing, not getting response, like the fear of being invisible in these platforms we take so much time in. And then there's the fear of giving too much away and what that might do, right? So there's all these assumptions about what the consequences might be of either sharing a lot or not sharing at all. And that fear in whatever form it comes up in is my enemy. What I try to do is recognize that it doesn't really matter that much. There's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with posting or not posting. It doesn't really seem to matter that much in the grand scheme of things. My, uh, so to the extent that I have any rules around this stuff, it's that I will not allow my Instagram to become purely a marketing machine. Um, I have to feel like it's still a platform for me to have fun and to throw things out there that just uh, come from whatever I'm feeling that day or what I'm thinking about. You know, and then sometimes I have to post something saying, hey, look, I have this thing for sale or something like that. But I just, I can't allow it to become too serious. And by the same token, if I'm just like posting whatever random garbage I shot that day because of a compulsion to post, I don't really feel like that's a good compulsion. How would you deal with the, the, the thought of having more ambition for a certain photo or set of photos that you're like, this photo is, I don't wanna say too good, but this photo should be used for a book or a zine and not on Instagram per se. It's hard to be very certain about how much it matters. There, I think it's very easy to feel like everybody who follows you sees everything you do and, just, and receives it as this uh, thing that's gonna stay in their memory and so on. And I mean, I have people that I talk to who are like pretty devoted followers of what I do, who will just completely miss things that to me are like really significant. Does that mean anything? It only means something about the dynamics of social media. It doesn't mean anything about artistic quality. It doesn't mean anything about the usefulness of these things in projects or bodies of work. There are certain pictures that get a really big reaction that when you put them in a body of work would feel kind of um, unimportant. As soon as it's in social media, it's it's a, its own topic to yeah. me. It's kind of doesn't doesn't matter so much in a social media platform versus on a printed thing and the way it's put together. And I don't know, it just feels like a whole different world to me. Yeah. Let's go yeah. down here. Cool. No, that makes sense. Thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> here we are in, on two stumps, two photographers on a log, on two logs, two stumps. And this is the part of the video where we answer your question that we sourced via Instagram. So if you want to get on the next one, follow Ruben, follow myself on Instagram, link in the description. The question is, how do you get over self-doubt? I think, and this was a big topic in my walkie-talkie series, Melissa brought this up. A lot of us carry self-doubt 
uh, especially street photographers, when walking around failing, 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 and finally getting a positive photo or you know a good photo, it takes a lot of failing, so inevitably leads to a lot of self-doubt in those in between. So Ruben, how do you handle or go about self-doubt in this whole street photography life that we live? Gosh, I mean, there's probably no real way out of it. I, I think it's, it's uh, an inevitable part of doing like pretty much all kinds of photography. Uh, I've never met anyone involved in photography who just gets it every time they you know, trip the shutter. And um, likewise, you know, doing this kind of work, uh, you're also spending a lot of time in pursuit without knowing what the photo is even going to be. You don't know what you're looking for. It's just this great unknown. And um, I think a lot about uh, when I was probably 30 years old, I was very interested in Zen Buddhism. And I, I found this group to sit meditation with in, in Montana where I was living. And um, they were followers of this Korean Zen master who uh, would uh, constantly tell his students to cultivate what he called don't know mind. His students would write to him and say, oh, great master, I've, uh, uh, I've done everything you told me. I sit meditation three times a day. I uh, clean the temple. I serve meals to everybody in silence. And I don't know whether I've reached enlightenment yet or not. I, I don't know what I'm doing. And he would write back and say, perfect, don't know. That's exactly where you wanna be is in the don't know. And last summer, uh, I was in a deep, deep state of not knowing. I was walking the streets every day, uh, really broke, uh, really not thinking I was making anything very good, and uh, just every day feeling really disappointed. And I just kept repeating in my head, only don't know, only don't know. And I just kept going. And um, by the fall, when better things were happening for me and I was feeling better, I went back and looked at what I had been making that summer and there was actually a lot of good stuff. Things that I'm really, really happy with. And so your feelings don't really tell you that much about what you're making. And I think you and I were talking about this in the context of, of ruts, you know, which aren't only self-doubt. There's other more like basic things that go into what we call ruts. So much is about just continuing to do the work and a trust that the process will reveal uh, what should be revealed. It's just, you're not always gonna know while you're doing it. And you're not gonna, we're no, we don't know the value of what we've made even when we like what we made. You know, if I, if I go through and I pick out my five favorite pictures that I've made, I have an idea of what makes them good, but it could be that 20 years from now, as the world changes and as our understanding of things changes, other pictures of mine that I think are relatively insignificant could seem to be much more important and ones that I place a lot of importance on might seem like, you know, not that big a deal. So self-doubt, there's too many sources of it, right? I mean, I kind of start from self-doubt. I wake up every day feeling a lot of self-doubt and wondering how am I gonna do it? And then by the end of the day, I have a very different experience but that uh, that doubt uh, it, it only becomes a problem if you quit you know as long as you're working and making and uh, evaluating what you've made and you're in a process uh, it'll all in the long arc turn out for the good so today is just today and we don't know what it means and uh, all of your self-doubt is just a feeling and uh, I'm here to say, uh, F my feelings. I mean, they don't really tell me very much that's, that's uh, conclusive, you know? I've, I've had days where I feel awesome and take the worst pictures I've ever taken. And while I'm taking them, I feel like, wow, I'm killing it. And then later I look at it and it's like, they're not terrible, but they're just like, there's nothing special about them, right? And then other days where I feel like absolute garbage and I take a picture that I'm gonna love for years and years to come. So I wouldn't attach too much importance to your feelings. Just stay in the don't know mind and, uh, and get back to work. Beautiful, beautifully said, yeah. Thank you. All right. That's gonna do it for this episode of Office Hours. We'll catch you again in the fall time.
uh, when it's a little bit cooler and not as hot out here. And October? October? Yeah. Yeah, we'll do it in October. Maybe the, the leaves will be nice here. So subscribe to the channel, comment something below, go follow Ruben, go follow me. Uh, thanks, thanks for watching. Love you guys, bye. Now when they see us in the streets, all they wanna do is take pics, and I'm like, okay.